Welcome to the Riot Podcast, everyone. This is Bob Shoneman alongside with Barry Rice. Hey, everybody. So glad that you're here with us today. And Pete Robertson. I'm humbled to be in your guys' presence. Mac Daddy is humbled. How about that? Truly, huh? truly I'm honored. Well, in today's, today's show, let's try to do this. So let's try to talk about two things. One, the holiness of God. And then also, so the nature of God's holiness. And then the second part, let's look at our need for his personal holiness in our own lives. And so as we break that down, we can do that. But yeah, so with John Wesley, yeah, being a worm, I mean, just people can picture that, right? Being a worm, this little small worm trying to comprehend a triune God. You know, speaking of triune God, he's three times holy. I always try to ask myself, why do they say holy, holy, holy? Well, because holy God, holy Jesus, holy spirit. And so it's holy, holy. He's three times. So he's not just holy. He's asking us to be holy, but he is three times holy. So even, even greater than you can even possibly imagine if you can even try to grasp and understand holiness. Exodus fifteen eleven, it was a song of Moses. He said, who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness? No one is like the Lord in holiness and being separate. He is totally separate. I mean, it, that's ad ad phrase right there, but that's a NLT, I think, the version. But I mean, it's just saying he's there's no one like him. If you truly want to try to grasp his the, the magnitude of who he is, there's just you can't. Your brain there can't get There is nothing else to compare him to, right? Nothing. There's nothing like him. In all of creation. And it's like when Hannah, remember when Hannah came before um, the priest and what is it, Eli, or, uh, Eli, and she was sitting there just crying out to the Lord in a- anguish and in agony. And uh, she's just praying for a son. And, you know, her husband has been given the other wife, you know, kids and so forth. And she doesn't have him. She has a barren child. And she's just praying and praying and she said, you know, God, I'm going to give that son back to you to, to proclaim your name and, and so forth. And God answered her prayer and God gave her Samuel and he, and he answered her prayer and he said, and, and she at, in her brokenness goes back and she says in 1 Samuel 2, 2, she says, no one is holy like the Lord for there is none beside you, nor is there any rock like our God. And she, she recognized in that moment, this is something special. This, here I am crying out to this Lord, and he's answering my prayer. Not only did he answer his prayers for, for with Samuel, but she get, he opened her wound for others as well. And so it's, it's, you know, trying to get that, it's pretty comprehensible, incomprehensible. When I used to hear, you know, you need to fear the Lord, and I'm, you know, I, it, I thought of that like, oh, I had to be scared of him. I have to be afraid of him. And... This makes it sound like it's more of a, it's a, a respect that you can't even define. Yeah, it's just it's an, an overwhelming, awe, yeah, it's awe, an, awe, yeah. awe-inspiring respect, and yeah. man, it, that that puts it in a whole different context. You know, where when you're just afraid, like, why do I want to serve a God that I'm scared of or I'm afraid of? That's a different context than yeah. a God that you're in awe of, right? Right. So I don't know. Yeah, it's the one that it's the the ant underneath the thumb that is. Be- you either serve me and and die, or or don't or serve yeah. me. Don't serve me and die, or serve me and live. Yeah, that's not God. No. God is who He is, and He deserves because He is holy to be worshipped and honored and glorified and exalted, because He, in the, in His existence, of who He is, He is holy, and that is the definition, really, right? God is who He is, and and. When when Moses was asking him his name, he yeah. says, "I am." I am. Hey, you, you know, what's your name? What should I tell you? The people you are. He he was thinking, "Oh, Phil, Fred. You can call me Phil." <laughs> yeah. But he says, "I am. I'm God. I'm That's I'm awesome. not like anything else. It's only one me, hmm. and I'm holy." The Psalms one hundred four one says, "Bless the Lord, O my soul." Oh Lord, my God, you are very great. You were clothed with splendor and majesty. And and again, it just brings me back to, are we showing, are we trembling? Are we showing the reverence to God that he deserves? Are we bringing the majesty that he deserves? Are we 
humbling. Our, I mean, are we on our knees broken before him? Are we flat down on our faces before him? And I confess, I, I don't do it as much as I should. I, do I enter into his presence broken with a contrite spirit? Am I, am I showing him the all that he deserves? And, and it just, it brings me to the thought when we think about a holiness, and, and we're going to talk about this here in a second, but when, it, when Peter said, 1 Peter 1, 16, he says, be holy for I am holy. When he said that, can you imagine a person that is holy? Can you imagine a person that understands what we're talking about right now, that is in all of God, that shows him the majesty and the fear, that, that is obedient to him, that is living for him? Can you imagine that person that is holy, what they can do here on earth with God leading them? If God is the one that sets the standard, if God is the one that creates all things, if God is the one that invents things and gives the mindset and, and guides and protects and provides, if God is the one that does all of that, can you imagine if you're filled with his holiness, what you can do for him? You know, uh, that makes me think of Moses, Pete, uh, in Exodus 3, 5, it says, do not come any closer. Take off your sandals mm -hmm. for the place where you're standing is holy ground. I mean, think about the respects that I, the respect that our parents want us to have when we come into their home and we take off our shoes, right? And you know that's an Oriental type of mindset too. That you you when you go in the presence of your 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 parents, you take off your shoes. But this is the God of the universe, and when we're in His presence, it's saying here, "You're on holy ground. You're a place where I, my presence is. Take off your sandals." We're not, to, you know, the the one time that Jesus really demonstrated he got angry was turning over the tables of the money changers. And he said, my my house is not going to be made a, a den of thieves. It's a, it is a house of prayer. Why? Because they were not respecting his presence yes. mm -hmm. and his place where mm -hmm. his presence dwelt it. Mm -hmm. And so, man, if, if you want to make God angry, Remember uh, Galatians 6, 7, God will not be mocked. A man will reap what he sows, that God in his holiness, he will judge. And he is, he is loving and he is the righteous judge. How do you get into God's holiness? <clears throat> you, you stop walking in the flesh. You stop what you're doing in your life. You, you humble your heart. And you turn from whatever sin or whatever that's happening in your life and you just cry out to him. And, and you can't, you don't come in, in haughtiness. You don't come with your pride. You don't come to him with thinking that you know what you're talking about. You don't come with him demanding answers. You come in humility. You come in reverence. You come in awe. And, and you cry out, says, Lord, help my unbelief because I don't understand right now, but just help me, God. And you come with a brokenness. And in what here's this is this is this is a guaranteed fact. Wherever the Spirit of God is, that place is separated from anything normal. It is changed. It is holy. It is transformed. Hmm. And so if you want to experience God's presence, you have to make a choice. And that is you have to stop. Live in the lifestyle the way that you're living. You know, and it's not just that. We talked about last week uh, in the mission-minded characteristics is the lifestyle. To, to walk, there's different ways. There's a way of walking in the flesh and walking, doing work like your normal day, and then walking in the spirit. Walking in the spirit is you're constantly recognizing that the holiness of God is at work in your life. And so you're always mindful when you're in traffic to be praying for the person to the right and to the left to be worshiping him or be using that time to give him glory. Or when you get to, to Wendy's, as we talked about last week, and, and nobody's there to serve you, that you're looking for opportunities to be able to speak life into somebody that is hurting right now. Your, your lifestyle is different. You're walking in the holiness of God, but it changes things. There's nothing can stay the same. If anybody didn't hear last week's uh, mission-minded characteristics, what Barry was telling the Wendy's um, story, listen to that. 
that lady was changed. Yeah. Listen to that story. Yeah. It's, it's because the holiness of God was unleashed. So good. And so that's kind of what took place. Holiness within us is the smell of God. Almost. Oh, Amen. I knew he had, I knew he'd bring it home. So good. So, so, good. so if right. you're not smelling holy, who are you hanging out with and what are you about? And, but here, here's the thing about holiness. It sets you apart from everybody else. It's God's mark on us. To be sanctified is to be set apart. It's part of the process that we go through as Christians to be molded and shaped into God's image. And so it's a, it's a, um, circumstances that happen in our lives can be part of the sanctification, um, issues or things that were not our very best and God needs to correct that can be part of the sanctification. And, um, and I think that a lot of times Christians, when they're going through sanctification, you have, again, two choices, surrender and let it happen. Let God have his way because we are going through this because all he, he's a jealous God. He does not want to compete with the world. And so if we're going through sanctification, God is saying, Hey, hello, I'm here. And then he's just saying, come unto me. Let me give you rest. Let me take care of this. Let me mold you and shape you into my image. It's kind of like what we talked about the refiner's fire. Okay. In my flesh, I wish that once I surrendered to God, that it would just all be taken care of and I would not have to go through <laughs> any <done>. sanctification. <laughs> I don't know. I don't like that sanctification part. I'm not, I'm not a fan of that. But my heart says, God, here I am, send me. My heart says, I desire God to be like you. And, and I know that it sucks. And I know that some of you might be listening to this and saying, you know what? I'm being molded and shaped into holiness because you're not there yet. None of us are there. None of us will arrive until we arrive. Yeah. We're all on this journey. That's right. We're all fall short of the glory of God. We all are doing our best to get through another day. But there is a good God that loves us and he is desiring to have intimate relationship with us. And his desire is for us, for us to be transformed into his image. He wants us to be image bearers. He does not want us to be, um, as Barry said, I think it was last podcast, he talked about putting a bumper sticker on the back of his car. He does not want us to misrepresent him. He wants us to be holy. He wants us to be transformed. He wants us to shine like Moses shined. He wants us to be able to come unto him and, and be free in his presence. And so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's holiness exposes our sin. It exposes the ugliness that's within us. Hmm. And I think there's a lot of Christians out there that think that they're not sinning that much. You're lying to yourself. I'm telling you, if you truly knew the holiness of God, if you really knew his perfection and everything, you're ugly and you need Jesus and you need help and you need to allow him to sanctify you. You need to wipe, let him wash you as white as snow. I'm telling that you. That would make an incredible shirt. You are ugly you are. and you need Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Whoa. That is, that is prophetic, brother, right there. I mean, what happened to Isaiah 6? Remember when you, King Uzziah was, was on the throne? Let me just read it real quick. This yeah. is what happened to Isaiah. So listen, if this, is not, if this has not happened to you, and you have not seen yourself as, as you should in God's holiness because you need help, then you're, you have a little too much pride for yourself. Let me say this, Pete. Yeah. This is why people don't like the presence of God. They like to be religious yeah. because in this passage, when you come, it's, I, I call it a head on crash yeah. with a holy God. You see yourself that you don't measure up. You mm -hmm. see your own saying, continue that. Peter. Yeah. So Isaiah six, and he says, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lifted up and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim, each one had six wings, with two covered his face and two covered his feet, and the two uh, flew. And one cried to another, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. So I said, Woe is me, for I am undone. 
because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken from the tongs from the far altar. And he touched my mouth with it, and he said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away, and your sin is purged. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And whom shall go for us? And then I said, here I am, mm. send me. And, and, I, and I, when I meditated on this, and I had to think about this for a long, long while, here is Isaiah, the prophet of prophets. Here is a man that the Israelites look to as having the answers. This man spoke for a living. This man was reverenced in their people, in their presence. And this man, when he spoke, what he said came true. And he's one of the larger prophets we have in the Bible. And here's this man coming face to face with the holiness of God. And he says, woe is me. My own lips are undone. And he recognized his sin. And he recognized that he is done with. But then in the grace of God, he cleansed them of his sin in the grace of God he says whom shall I send because anybody that comes into God's presence and his holiness he will touch you he will transform you and then he will ask you are you willing to go for me and that's the holiness of God this has been the riot podcast if you liked what you heard today please feel free to leave a comment and share it with your friends See you back here next week for another episode of the Riot Podcast.